Hi and welcome to episode 84 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Reportage and This Reportage family, and I'm a photographer too. Really love chatting to the fab Joao Lorenco for this week's episode. Joao is one of the best documentary wedding photographers in Portugal and was in our top 10 Portuguese photographers of 2020. He's won three story awards from us and six reportage awards too. An amazing haul, and he talks about some of those on the episode today, as well as many other things, including how he's used Excel to really strengthen his business, his love of travel and how that helped kickstart his photography, a certain function that only Fujifilm cameras have that is great for documentary, storytelling, top tips for better coverage, a Netflix game, motorbikes, and much more too. Hey, Joao, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good, doing great. Thank you. How are you? Good, man. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good as well. It's um, sunny in Cornwall here. I bet it's, it's got to be I sunny where you are. That. I know. I can't <laughs> believe that. that is, that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those, I think it's one of the two days a year where we have sun. No, we do get a bit more than that. But how about you? It must be sunny with you as well. You're in Portugal. It is you? not sunny in Portugal right now. <laughs> really? Have we swapped yeah. places? <laughs> yeah. I, I was just taking my daughter to her school, and as soon as we left home, she was just wearing a t-shirt, and she was like, Daddy, I'm cold, so I had to go back. Oh, wow. <laughs> Gosh, I didn't know that happens in Portugal. Well, it does, uh, more <laughs> than you'd think. Oh, man, that's, yeah. like, that's funny. That's like the yesterday, actually. We t- I took my kids to school, and it was lovely and sunny, so we didn't take a coat. And when I picked them up, it was torrential rain, and they were ah. standing out in the playground with their book bags over their heads because they didn't have a coat <laughs> on. That is, that yeah. is oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But you, you generally get a lot better weather than us, though, don't you? Well, of course, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, more, um, more hours of sun every year, uh, mm. more than anywhere in the UK. <laughs> but we also get more rain uh, than oh, in, really? in the winter. In the winter, we get more rain than uh, most of the UK. Yeah. Oh gosh, I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't believe that until I actually lived in in Scotland, Glasgow, and then Edinburgh for a couple of years, and I was surprised that it didn't rain that much in the winter compared to uh, where I lived in Portugal. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So, right. and then I, I checked on Wikipedia. It's it's pretty easy. Just go to Wikipedia, search <laughs> the the name of the city, and then uh, any Portuguese city, let's say Lisbon or Porto. Porto brings even more. So just search there, and when you go down, you'll have a graphic of the rainfall every month of the year. Compare mm-hmm. it to Edinburgh, and you'll see that in the winter it rains like three times as much as it does wow. there. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> wow! You learn something new every day. I love that. Yeah, That's super. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you actually, do you live in Lisbon? Are you nearby to Lisbon? Uh, yeah, well, uh, not Lisbon, Lisbon, but there's the greater Lisbon. Uh, so I live in Almada. So that's just, uh, so you have Lisbon, you have the Tagus River, and then it's just on the south bank of the, of the river. Yeah, no, so we have the best nice. views over Lisbon. Yeah. Oh, really? That does sound lovely. And yeah. we met very, we met briefly, didn't we? At um, Yeah, that was yeah. fun that night at the TIR meetup. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, unfortunately, it was uh, brief. I mean, I don't know if you guys went somewhere after that, but I couldn't stay that uh, long. Yeah, we did go out a bit after, but it's a bit hazy in my memory, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, but it was lovely meeting you there, man. And that was a, yeah. a shame. With, that was one of the, well, one of the, well, when was that? It was a couple of years ago now, wasn't it? It's, oh. that, yeah, that was in 2019, I think. Yeah. yeah. Man, different world back then as well. It was totally different. Mm. How has it, how has it been for you? You know, the last 15, 16 months. You know, on a business level, but a personal <laughs> level as well. How how has it been? Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> if I'm totally honest, it was it was good. Okay, that's <laughs> on great. Both, good. On both ends. I uh, mean, cool. uh, I mean, well, uh, putting things in perspective, of course, it was hard to have um, my three-year-old back then three-year-old now four-year-old daughter at home for three mm-hmm. months uh, in last march and then again in the beginning of this year it was hard but it was lovely also because mm-hmm. uh, i loved having that extra time with her um it, i kind of managed to compensate the time that i sometimes didn't have during the peak of the uh, wedding season uh, yeah so that was great uh yeah. And on the business side of things, uh, I mean, it went, it didn't go bad. It wasn't great, but I still had, uh, I still um, 
uh, I didn't have a, a huge in decrease in uh, uh, what I uh, I'm forgetting the word in what I got in terms of money in what I in, in my oh your income or my income yeah okay right. uh, I mean liquid meaning that I, I had less expenses so I'm always buying gear and I'm always <laughs> investing in new stuff and okay. last year I didn't right so I there was a lot less money going out. And oh, cool. So it evens in. it out. Less coming in, but a little less going out. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and and on top of that, uh, also we we didn't travel, so we also uh, we like to do a big trip every year. So we we didn't uh, okay. travel last year, so we also saved on that end. And um, well, that's good. Yeah, and and it sounds and like I, you were fine mentally. It sounds like you've been it's a, been quite a happy time for you. Yeah, well, lately, over the last two years, it's just been uh, two months, sorry, it's just been crazy in terms of work. It's like the economy woke up and I'm just really, really uh, busy all the time. I mean, right. not with weddings. I don't only photograph weddings. Ideally, I would, but I'm always afraid of having all my eggs in one basket. Yeah, that's true. If one thing COVID has taught us, it's taught us yeah. that's not a good thing. So what else yeah. do you shoot then? What have you been shooting the last couple of months? Um, well, so, uh, over the last couple of months, I've been doing some, uh, I've, I've done some weddings. I've, I've already, uh, shot three weddings this year. Oh, cool. Uh, what are the regulations like at the moment? Sorry. Just, uh, I guess, uh, um, you, have you got a limit on number of guests and things or? They're always changing. I mean, uh, okay. uh, over the last month, it has been 50% of the total capacity of the uh, venue. Yeah. Um, so the venue is basically like a restaurant in, in terms of the law, right? Uh, so if, if the venue uh, takes by law a, a maximum number of seats, then you, you can have that and that's the maximum number of guests uh, okay. uh, right. at that venue. But right now, uh, there are some, some areas, some uh, districts that will have, uh, well, not, not actually districts. Uh, we call it councils, but it's not the same thing in English. Uh, it's it's well some cities, let's say, that will that right now have uh, higher numbers of um, COVID people, uh, COVID numbers. So uh -huh. uh, that's only twenty five percent right now. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Wow. And so everyone's wearing all the guests have to wear masks still, do they? Uh, yeah, but I I suppose that people are a lot more relaxed right now because uh, back. Well, last year I, I photographed only four weddings, and people right. were concerned about uh, their older relatives that also wanted to attend the wedding, because if there was an outbreak at the wedding, of course, the the, the worst case scenario would be that the older people would catch mm -hmm. COVID, and that yeah. could be dramatic. <laughs> so, but yeah. right now, most people above sixty are fully vaccinated. So mm -hmm. that's kind of okay. I mean, kind of. It's not okay, of course, but uh, it's, oh, but it's a lot better. Yeah, it's a lot better if people don't wear masks. If there's an outbreak, I mean, the consequences won't be that bad. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's always bad. But but some sometimes people um, now nowadays uh, the, the the weddings I've shot this year they're mostly on the outside and people still wear masks most of the day. Oh but really? Yeah. After yeah for uk yesterday as well and that it was announced from july 19th all restrictions are ending so no more mask wearing no social distancing it's all ending on july 19th that's great yeah, yeah it is good news isn't it? it's going to be a lot of, it's going to be scary for a lot of people i understand that as well yeah. but yeah. i also just really feel we've got to get back to life we've got to start you know living again um of course, so, yeah mm. yeah and I, I suppose that over the next next two months I'd say all over Europe, probably, uh, with, with all the vaccination going at the pace it's going. Probably mm. in the next two months, things will just get dramatically better, I, yeah. hope, I suppose. I know, <laughs> touch wood. Cases will go up, but it's it's the hospitalizations and deaths yeah. that matter, isn't it? Yeah, and it's course, really, yeah. it is like, have you been, have you had your jabs? Uh, the first, yeah. I'll, be, yeah. I'll have the second in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, you're too young to have like both your jabs already, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I've got oh, both mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old, man. I'm old. <laughs> yeah, you're old. But but then again, in the UK is a bit ahead of uh, the rest of Europe in terms. Oh, of right, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, it's well, it's important for me to to get the um, uh, both before the beginning of august because I'll, I'll be having i'll be shooting a wedding in norway uh, in at the end of august oh wow cool, so That's yeah so i i need the the vaccine i need i need that uh, digital 
passport, is it? Ah, uh, right. Yes. Yeah, so otherwise, you, well, you won't be allowed in. Otherwise, will you not? Well, I, I could go, but then I'd have to do a uh, a test, a uh, CPR, PCR, whatever that's called, oh, test yeah. before right. going, and then another one before coming back. Uh, so that's just the distance. Uh, and okay. yeah, and it's a bit expensive, also. But <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that if you don't need to. That's cool. A wedding in Norway. Um, yeah. Is that been a booking for, that you've had for a while, or is it a recent booking? Uh, well, it's. Uh, well, kind of. So it's a wedding that was supposed to have happened last year in Portugal because uh, she's uh, she's the daughter of Portuguese parents that uh, immigrated uh, some decades ago to Norway, okay. and she's marrying a Norwegian guy, and they decided to get married in Portugal. But last year, of course, they they mm. weren't um, happy with how things were in Portugal, so mm. they decided to postpone it. And at some point, they, after postponing several times, they just decided to get married in Norway. It would be easier. So that's, that's what they're doing. And I was happy uh, with going there to shoot their wedding. Cool, man. Yeah, that's great. I've never been to Norway, but that's going to be a great experience. Have you ever been? Uh, briefly, yeah. I, I once flew there and then caught a bus to get into uh, Sweden because I was meeting a friend there. Oh wow! Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love so, that. Yeah, I, saw, to yeah. Get a <laughs> I was there, but just uh, on transit. Let's say. Oh, okay, cool, <laughs> cool. Because I, I was going to ask you actually, but uh, that sounds like it's not from that time. But you said after you graduated, you decided to explore the world, and you travelled for six years. Man, did you really travel for six years? Well, uh, not continuously. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Well, I I finished my studies. Actually, I, I started traveling uh, when my last year at uni. So I, I studied uh, civil engineering uh, in in Portugal. And on my last year, I went to um, I, I I finished my last semester, not not last year, uh, in in Germany in Frankfurt. And yeah. and, Do you speak and German as well. I'll just a bit. I mean, I, I not fluently. I, I understand more than I speak, but yeah. just a bit. Yeah. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. It's just like, it's so interesting. It's sort of asking <laughs> questions about. And because your I asked that as well, by the way, because your English is just absolutely perfect. It's ridiculously oh, okay. good. It's so uh, good. It's it's just it's a it's a mix. Well, you'll probably notice it a lot more than probably non-native English speakers. But uh, I probably have a mix of. Uh, an American and British and Scottish accent. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> There's some words will will go towards one um, one accent. Some will go toward probably mostly towards American. Probably. Okay. I do. Yeah, hear a little twinge there. It's cool. You sound like a kind of like an emo American singer. Or something. <laughs> like probably. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, but so sorry. I, yeah, I was. Oh, yeah. You were talking about um, Germany and. Stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I, I finished my studies there, and then after that, I I I was working for one year in Portugal, but then I went to um, I went to Scotland. So I had some friends there. Back then, I was I was dating a Polish girl that I had met in Frankfurt. And so we went to Scotland uh, to work there. But of course, well, things didn't work out uh, with with uh, the, the girl, but I decided to stay in Scotland for a couple of years. Oh, cool, okay. Yeah, so uh, so I, I visited a lot of Scotland. So I bought a motorbike there and I, I just went everywhere. So oh, that nice. Was, that, was, that was perfect. I That's really cool. Have you still got a motorbike? I do. I still have that original one that oh, I bought cool. there, and and then when I came back to Portugal, I bought another one. Nice. So, I've <clears> never <throat> been. On, I've never been on a motorbike ever. Never. Oh, that's you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> really? Is it proper? Is it proper cool? Yeah. Oh, it, it, I I just love it. Uh, I mean, not only is it uh, useful to just go around in the city because Lisbon is just a nightmare with the traffic and right. trying to park a car. It's just crazy. Uh, with a motorbike, it's it's useful, but for traveling, I mean, I couldn't imagine traveling on my by, on my own by myself. I couldn't imagine traveling uh, on any other way. I mean, some mm -hmm. people I understand. Some people like bicycles, and that's that's also nice. But to uh, cover long distances, I just love the motorbike. It's oh, just a sense of freedom, and and you can. I don't know if you go through a, a field of flowers, you'll just you'll just feel the smell, right? I mean, or mm. by the sea, it's it's just it's I, I don't know. I just love it. Uh, it does. It sounds a very romantic way of getting yeah of traveling. Yeah, really, it, it is, does sound it really cool. Mm. Yeah, and and I bought the motorbike there, and um, coming back to Portugal, I took two weeks off, and and I was I did it on the motorbike through the Alps, 
Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, Germany, uh, north of Italy, south of France. I did the ops there and then came all the way to Portugal. And that was like one of the best trips I ever did. That yeah. sounds very cool. Yeah. Man. And then, yeah. And then after that, I, I came back to Portugal and then I was working in Libya for a little bit. Also oh, wow. engineering. Yeah. Gosh. But that's when I actually started uh, liking and paying more attention to photography because I, uh, I bought a nicer lens for my sony a700 <laughs> so, oh cool yeah yeah so <laughs> and that uh nice but old camera i just i just love that camera so i bought a lens and then i started taking some nicer pictures that i really liked uh more kind of documentary work mm -hmm. and yeah and, and then after that uh when i uh the, the war starts up there so I, I i couldn't go back uh, right. and i was in portugal back then the crisis, the, the financial crisis that had hit the UK a couple of years before, then got to Portugal. So I decided to go back to the UK, back to Edinburgh. And from there, I was also working as an engineer. And from there, the guys were like, oh, so you're working on this uh, project that, we, that we're doing in Saudi Arabia. Uh, what would you think about going there for just a couple of weeks? And yeah, I went there for a couple of weeks and then two more weeks. And in the end, I stayed there for two years. <laughs> oh, wow. Gosh, man. Gosh, yeah. you really and, have been all around. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. And, and before that, before going to Saudi Arabia, I took three months off and I just traveled through Southeast Asia backpacking. Uh, so that was also nice. And man. always with a camera with me. So, yeah. Oh, wow cool it's, it's 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 quite an inspiring story dude it's been like i just have this image of you like on a motorbike as well like driving through like a scottish by scottish locks and then then traveling yeah. through like yeah Saudi oh, it's just mental. perfect scotland's just perfect with a motorbike oh. it's just oh. absolutely gorgeous yeah. <laughs> would you like to do that again come over to scotland? i will i will yeah. do that again one day surely i will rent a motorbike and i will do that i will take like three or four days off and I'll just go around in the highlands on a motorbike. I have to do that. Oh, that's cool. That's it's cool. just way too good for, for people. Uh, I mean, for, for bikers, it's not, it's too good for bikers not to do that. And for people that don't know what riding a motorbike is, I mean, it's, it's a shame that you don't because you would ha absolutely love it. I've got to try it sometime. I think when I was a kid, my dad used to have um, a BMW 500 motorbike. I just, and I was never tall enough to like reach the pedal. So I never got to go on it. And, and then my mum was always really nervous when my dad went out on it in the evenings and yeah. stuff. So he ended up selling it. And so yeah, never been on it. Mm. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 Anyway, I'll have to, is, is your, your partner okay with you going out on the bike? And Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't go fast. So right, okay. And I always uh, wear full protective gear. That's so uh, not leathers, because that's a bit of a nuisance. But every time I have to take the bike out, I always have full gear uh, just just for the trip. And then when I get there, I just I just take the jacket and the trousers. They're protective, but I can ju just work with them. So yeah. Uh, okay. Take that's the jacket cool. and the helmet off, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, but leathers would be super hot in Portugal. Yeah, they would. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, it'd be like that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's cool. Anyway, let's let let's change tack slightly. And um, Joe, I I believe yeah, with your engineering background, you know, you you you're yeah. good with numbers, and 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 you said how this this had a big effect on your business as you've you've mastered Excel, which has helped to grow your business steadily even through the pandemic. Which I just thought sounds really interesting. Yeah. So can you tell us more about that? Yeah. Um, so. Well, I like Excel more than I like numbers. Not that I not that I like math. I like Excel. <laughs> okay, I bet not many people have said that phrase. I like Excel. <laughs> I love that. Cool. I do like Excel, and my father does also. But I like it because I I, I learned Excel on my own, and it's just a coincidence. Maybe it's genetic. I don't know. Okay. But I just I just love uh, working with it and and doing calculations with it, and uh, I I never had a. Um, an economy background kind of um, okay right so i i didn't know when i started my, my business i didn't know know how to i didn't know how, how much to charge i didn't know how to do it so i just i just thought how would i what would be logical uh, how could i do this so i did um the i have always i always heard that the the most important thing is to know your competition Mm -hmm. Not that I, I feel that uh, my colleagues, my photographer colleagues, are competition, mm -hmm. uh, but I do feel that um, 
I need to know what what they do and what they sell in order to know how to position myself. Mm, makes sense um, knowing the market. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. So yeah, so I, I know a lot of uh, photographers and I talk to them and um, and I, 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 I have a good idea of how much uh, they charge and sure. uh, and also I, I did, I, I went through all, well not all, but most of the photographers that are listed in this platform which is like several hundreds in the Lisbon area. And okay. I kind of tried to, uh, as objectively as possible, I tried to rate their work uh, and then look at my work in the same way and rate it. So oh, that I okay. could kind of, and then I, I plotted a graph with, in Excel also, of course, <laughs> uh, with uh, how much people charge and how good their work is. And I just, I knew more or less kind of how good my work is. Uh -huh. in terms of compared to theirs and then of course i have the line the average line of how much people charge right so it's going up mm -hmm. and i knew more or less how much i could charge i should charge for my work for the quality of my work right. and and to be as objective as possible i also asked a couple of people to look at uh, the work of some of those photographers and mine so that mm -hmm. I, I i didn't uh, run the risk of thinking i am better or worse than am i actually am. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, yeah. So from there, I knew what the average price I should uh, charge is. So I. Uh, yeah, cool. So yeah. So uh, I know. I love that as a proper. That's I love that way of looking at it. A proper kind of business analytical. <clears throat> it makes total sense to do that. Then that's yeah. really cool. And then and then so that's one thing. And then another thing I did was also in another tab of the same. Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> so <laughs> tab. I did all the calcu the calculation of all my costs uh, uh, over the year, including mm -hmm. my salary. So the so <clears throat> the the cool thing about Excel is that of course you can uh, change the numbers, and all the math um, that you have associated with those cells will be automatically updated. Right. So I have some fixed costs. So I have a studio, for example. So oh, I cool. have. Uh, I have some fixed costs of having that studio, mm -hmm. uh, and other things. Some some legal costs, of course, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know taxes. Everything uh, I just put everything in there. Uh, how much I spend on average per year on my computers, on my cameras, on my lenses, uh, all that. So all that went into there as fixed costs, and um, then I have kind of. A fixed but not too fixed cost being the salary mm -hmm. and uh, with all that being <clears throat> uh, summed up so th those are my total costs per year and then I have another cell where I put my ideal number of weddings right mm -hmm. so then I can play with my salary and the number of weddings I want to do per year so higher salary less weddings there's a, a, a price that I should charge per wedding and then I can either reduce the salary and increase the number of weddings to keep keep the same uh, number, the same mm -hmm. value per wedding, right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, with all that calculation, uh, I, I got to the conclusion that uh, what people charge is right spot on with uh, those calculations, right? So, um, I want to I want to shoot. Uh, say 23 to 25 weddings per year. Right. I don't mm -hmm. to shoot more because I also want to have weddings with my family. Mm -hmm. And that's already sure. a lot of weddings, a lot of Saturdays that mm -hmm. I don't spend with my family. So uh, say 25 weddings per year maximum. So that's my number. And say 2,000 euros ideally uh, right. for my salary. Maybe that's not a lot in the UK, but in Portugal that's quite reasonable. Right. Uh, cool. So I put that. And then I have a, an average per wedding with all the costs associated of, say, 1,200 euros. That's probably also, again, not much in the UK, but that would be an average right, okay. uh, in, in Portugal. So, and that's in line with uh, a lot of my uh, colleagues at the same level of work that I do, right? Right. So, yeah, so that's, that's two different calculations I did and to get to that number. And then, of course... With all those calculations, I can just easily change numbers to see if I can, say, make a discount 
for example, for mm -hmm. some clients that say get married, I don't know, in March, for example, why not? Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I have a lot of time uh, yeah, yeah. Hands in March. Um, so yeah, I, I know if I do a discount on, in this wedding, I'll have to charge more on another wedding, maybe the first Saturday of September, because that's mm -hmm. the, the one that has uh, the most people interested. Yeah, so. right. ah, that's great, <laughs> man. That's so good. Engineering. <laughs> that's suppose. proper cool. You should you should like sell that Excel spreadsheet, you know, with like <laughs> with all the formulae and and I mean, uh, yeah, people would be interested in that though. That's really good. I mean, anyone who's interested, I mean, I'm happy to have a, a quick chat or even do. A, I could probably do a, a screen recording and just yeah, if people do are that. interested and just do that. Do yeah. that, man. That would be such a good one. That would be so good. Yeah, yeah. that would be great, man. Because I, my, my Excel, I use Excel as well, but only on a very basic level, kind of just doing kind of, I use it for my personal, my tax, really. So just income and, and expenditure, really. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to know a lot more about it. I know it's a very powerful thing and I probably use about 1% of it. So yeah. I'd to know more yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. And cool. uh, yeah, and, and you have a lot of, uh, you have a lot to learn in Excel itself, but once you actually master Excel, you can go even uh, further by learning VBA. So that's Visual Basic for Applications. So that's coding, but it's it's a simplified coding where you can do everything that you cannot do natively in Excel, you can do there. Oh, right. Wow. Code, yeah, and just run the macros. Man, so yeah. that's another level. That's another that's level, job. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's cool that's cool though man um and and, and earlier i you said how you love your gear and yeah. uh, and i know you're a fujifilm shooter and you yeah. you said to me that there, there's a function that only fujifilm cameras have that helps yeah. the documentary style a lot so what yeah. is that what is that Tell <laughs> us. <laughs> now let's talk about fujifilm <laughs> all right so uh first things first i shot sony for the first three years shooting weddings professionally and, but I was shooting uh, the A-mount system. Um, just, uh, just before getting into Fuji, uh, the thing is that I bought, uh, the, the first camera I bought, professional camera, the Sony A90, A99, that was an A-mount camera. And I bought it when I was in Saudi Arabia because, I, well, I, I had spare time and a, a, a bit more money. So I thought, well, I'd just love to have this camera. Let's try it. I bought it, and then when I came back to Portugal, I thought, well, let's just try and do something professional with this. And I had shot weddings for friends, so that's why I started shooting weddings okay. with the professional gear that I already had. So um, Sony, at some point, released, I think 2012 or 13, they released the E-mount that you now have. You have the E-mount, because the A9 that you have, I think, Alan, is, oh, right. Okay. Right? See, I, so I don't e even know that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's E mount, but Sony had the A mount before, which came from Minolta. Okay. Uh, the, the Minolta lenses could be used in Sony cameras, but they just stopped developing that mount. So even though I liked my Sony cameras, I'm just, I, I have a bit of a now a love hate relation with Sony because I love their cameras, but they just abandoned the Sony A mount users. Uh, okay. And I don't see Fujifilm, for example, doing that, not in the same way. I mean, uh, I, I think they care about their customers a bit more. <laughs> so now talking about my camera. Controversial, controversial. <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe. No, but okay. uh, but uh, yeah, I still, uh, I don't know. I, every now and then I think that I'd be happy with a couple of lenses, not really the, the bodies, but a couple of Sony lenses that I really wish I, I could have. But But for now it's Fuji. Right. Because Fuji, uh, the, so the X-T3 and X-T4 um, both have a function that I love. So you can, so the sensor reads out really fast. Uh, so you don't have a lot of rolling shots in okay. the electronic uh, mode. Of course, with a Sony A9, you have a lot less even because it's a different kind of sensor. Right. But with the Fuji, you, you don't have a lot. But one thing cool that you have there with the Fuji is that when you have continuous high set along with the electronic shutter in the Fuji, there's a function called the pre-shot function. And what that does is when you half press the shutter, it will be taking, say, 10, 12, or even up to 20 frames per second 
but those frames will be going straight into the buffer, okay. but not being written into the card. Ah. So when you have pressed the shutter, those are going into the buffer. And you can wait for as long as you want with a button half pressed, and the images won't be recorded. But if something cool happens, you just right after it happens, you press the shutter down, and everything, all the images, say 10, 15 images that are in the buffer, will be written to the card, right? That is proper cool. Yeah, yeah. I totally understand that. It's a yeah. really good function. So, yeah. so a, a good way of people understanding this is, uh, say, when the groom is trying to pop open the champagne, right? Mm -hmm. And they want mm -hmm. to catch the cork just getting right out of the, of the bottle. I mean, sometimes the, the groom will be there for like, a minute yeah right, to pop it open. sometimes yeah. it's just right then right yeah so if you take your a9 for example at 20 frames per second and you start shooting i mean after one minute you'll have several hundreds of pictures mm. and maybe you still didn't catch that cork coming out but with this camera you just have press it and once he pops it open you just press the shutter down it saves like 10 frames to the card and one of those frames will have the cork coming that out of the bottle yeah, I yeah. totally get why that is so good. That is really, really good. Yeah, that, that has saved me so many times. I mean, I use it a lot. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, Sony, they need to get that. Do they not yeah. have that even on like the, a, the A9 II or anything? I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't, I not that I know. I mean, Fuji yeah. is the only camera that has it. I know that there was or there is another camera that had it, but it's Micro Four Thirds. I think it's right. the... Uh, Olympus or something or Panasonic G9, I think. I think Panasonic okay. G9, but it's it's a smaller sensor and the lenses aren't that um, bright, wide open, so I I couldn't use um, that system. But Fuji is fine with low light. Uh -huh. Not perfect, not as good as Sony, but it's good enough for my needs. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's cool, man. That is a, that honestly, that is such a great feature, and I could see where that would be useful in in loads of situations as yeah. well. Actually, so. speeches. It's perfect for speeches. I don't know yeah. if you struggle with speeches, but uh, I struggle uh, with everything, man. I struggle with everything. <laughs> <laughs> but with speeches, it, it it's really good because people are just uh, when people are talking, it's difficult to get the mouth to look natural when they're mm -hmm. talking, right? Yeah. And before I had this function, I would just be shooting there like, I don't know, 50 frames probably. And then I'd have to go back uh, uh, to see those frames that I had shot to see if they're, they're okay, if there's mm -hmm. any good picture there. But now I don't even go back to, to seeing the frames. I just put it in pre-shot and I'm seeing the frames at 20 frames per second that the camera is actually going to capture. Mm -hmm. So when I press the shutter down, that's that's it that's uh, I, i'm pretty sure that i took the, the picture that's very cool yeah yeah i think you maybe you've sold a lot of people on that <laughs> camera system <laughs> oh and another thing that i just i found on my last wedding that i did uh so if you want to do uh, those uh shots at say one eighth of a second mm -hmm. uh, where, where people are just moving and they you'll have the the blurry arms and blurry yeah. legs and you try to keep say the the head that the, the face uh focus mm -hmm. once you do that say put it at an eighth of a second with a pre-shot function you can actually see the shots one after the other with a blurry effect mm -hmm. so um when you press down the shutter you only do that because you you already saw one of the frames that's exactly what you wanted so it's a, it's a lot better, it's a lot easier to get good blurry shots, motion motion blurry shots, yeah. Very cool. Well, yeah. Honestly, you have sold people, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And, and with the latest lenses that they're now um, selling, so I just bought the 18mm f1.4, uh, which is equivalent to 28mm in full frame. And I just love that lens. And they're going to um, be uh, uh, coming out with other lenses in the same level of, uh, I don't know, of um, detail? No. Okay. <laughs> the same okay. level of uh, professional results as right. this okay. one I just bought. And I just love that lens. That's just a perfect lens for me. Man, you should be a Fujifilm ambassador. 
<laughs> you should get that. Uh, you should. You should uh, get it. Uh, that 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 brings us to one of the things that I'm rubbish at, which is marketing my work, especially on social media. I'm just I just I'm just awful at that. Really, I don't you like just, social media. You don't like. <laughs> It's what you don't like it in general on a personal level or just for business or i i just i don't find it interesting uh, either personal or business level i just uh, when i look at my uh, uh, phone i i i have the uh, instagram button there a logo and i just don't press it ever <laughs> i just i just i don't like it i don't think it's it's interesting i i don't know right. it's it's just like i once told that to uh, a client uh, and she's kind of quite young and she was like how's that possible that a photographer doesn't like um instagram and i was like well just think about a chef do you think that a chef likes mcdonald's for example oh yeah a chef would <laughs> love mcdonald's that. well like, everybody yeah, loves was, mcdonald's but... <laughs> probably, sorry ellen i forgot yeah well, of course <laughs> everybody loves mcdonald's you're absolutely right <laughs> <laughs> no i know exactly uh, what you mean of course yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, I have but, a funny relationship with it as well, with social media. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, every now and then I'll go to Instagram and I do like being there. But um, with uh, with having a limited amount of time for myself, meaning that, of course, most of the time I'm working and the rest of the time I just want to spend it with my family. In the, and in those uh, few moments that I do have time for my phone and just for myself, I'll usually not open Instagram. Not that I actually don't like seeing, say, what my friends are posting or what some of my colleagues are posting. Uh, but I just prefer, say, YouTube, for example. Right. Okay. But but I prefer YouTube because I don't know. There's just a lot of channels on YouTube, or even Netflix. Okay. But <laughs> but yeah. on YouTube, I just love those channels where, you, like, scientific channels, uh, the ones where you learn something. I just oh, love those. Cool. That's cool, man. I love hearing that. And I, yeah, I, I'm honestly, I'm with you as well. I watch a bit more YouTube now and um, just kind of early evening because it's got it on the big telly and I've never used to, used to visit it much, but now I do. And I, I quite like the kind of reaction videos, like where like a, a composer will listen yeah. to like, like Radiohead <laughs> or Metallica yeah. or something. And then, yeah. or someone's listening to a, a singing teacher's watching a video of like a rock singer or something. And I just find it really interesting to see people's reactions to other things. That's a bit bizarre, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I enjoy that. It's good, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and that's one thing that I've always found just interesting. I mean, uh, YouTube as a whole. I I I once thought that I could try starting my YouTube channel, but I think I'm just I would be rubbish at that. No, uh, I mean, you've been really camera. good at that. You're so knowledgeable and so interesting. <laughs> People, well, maybe that. I don't know. I've, I'm always thinking I should try it, but then I never get the courage to do that. But but I love uh, I love. Uh, not not YouTube specifically, but I love video. So uh -huh. yeah. So lately, uh, well, one thing good that the pandemic brought to me was that uh, I just had more time to think about what I've been doing and what I would like to do, and I just kind of uh, got the courage, let's say, to start uh, trying video. Right. So oh, cool. I've been okay. starting to do some things on the video site. Of business. Ah, what what kind of thing with weddings or with other things <clears throat> well not weddings still uh but i will be starting with weddings at some point so uh, uh -huh. first things first now i'm just uh learning how to edit uh effectively and um meaning right. trying to be fast not taking too long so i didn't want to start weddings uh right from scratch so now i'm starting with smaller things like interviews but interviews of things that I uh, have, say, businesses that okay. I um, get along with. Uh, yeah. For example, there's a coding school in Lisbon, and I love those guys. It's like um, younger people, and they're, like, really dynamic. And okay. I've been shooting for them uh, for, like, four years now. And now I've just started doing some video, and it's uh, I, I love it uh, yeah. because it's something I identify oh, cool. with. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Th that's, that's one... Um, example uh so I'm, I'm trying to start like that and also I, I i do know some videographers uh that just do the video and they don't do any editing so uh this year i'll be having two weddings uh where they will be shooting the video for for myself and they'll, then i will be editing the video and uh. if if i don't 
if I, if I think I'm not capable of producing the best results, then I will ask them to edit the video. Mm, so I'm always safeguarded there, right? <laughs> mm, yeah, that's but, really yeah, cool, man. But I, I'm, I'm interested. I'm, I'm loving it. It's, it's a, it's a fresh new thing, right? Still related to photography, so, somehow. Yeah, so, definitely. Uh, and I also have all the gear that I need. So yeah, uh, are you using the same cameras that you shoot with? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just, I just had to buy a gimbal because, unfortunately, my, my, I have two XT threes, and they aren't um, stabilized. Uh, right. I have some lenses that are, but uh, the gimbal just helps quite a bit. Yeah, they look and cool I, I, as well. yeah, and and <laughs> one thing, uh, just just a bit a bit of a salty rant about uh, camera manufacturers. Overall, <laughs> <laughs> I think most wedding photographers will uh, understand this, which is that um, a lot of camera makers are coming out with cameras with that uh, flippy screen. You know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about? The one that yeah. flips to the side. And yeah. personally, for documentary work, I just hate it. <laughs> you don't like the screen. I, I don't like the screen that flips to the side. I like the screen that only flips up. That oh, doesn't right, okay. go to the left of the camera, right? It just flips up and down, okay, like yeah. is the case with the X-T3. The X-T4 has that in-body image stabilization, which is great. I just didn't buy it because I would have to use it mostly for weddings and documentary work, right? And that screen that tilts out I, I just think that's not good for the kind of work we do not the kind of work I do at least uh, okay okay <laughs> you see that it's just a screen that that goes out and and if you're just if you have your camera at waist level just hanging from that uh, say, money maker for example I think it would just sooner or later we just break the nah, uh, okay the yeah. yeah, that's not good. That isn't yeah. good. That would be awful at a wedding, isn't it? Imagine if that happened. Yeah, that would be so yeah. and Sony's coming out with cameras like that, and Nikon also now, and Canon, all the cameras oh, Canon right. have mm -hmm. screens. So that's just that's just driving me crazy that I couldn't buy the, the camera I wanted from Fuji because of that screen. But, I mean, you know, <laughs> probably like it, but... <laughs> Salty rent over. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. I'm so behind on kind of like latest camera developments and things, you know. So I, I think I've always been like that. So I was with a seven D for like a few years, and then five D three, and then went to the A nines. You know, I only change system about once every like I don't know six years or something, five years. So I just, yeah, it's just something I'm not so. I don't know. I'm not so interested in it. I love talking to people that are though as well. I love yeah. that. It's different. Yeah. It's cool, man. It's I cool. mean, I, yeah, I like it. I mean, I always like, loved gear. I have a bit of gas, you know, gear acquisition syndrome. Oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, I have a bit of that, but I, I, I try not to buy too much gear. And, and last year and this year, actually, uh, all the gear that I bought, I did it by selling the gear that I had lying around that I didn't use. Oh, wow. So I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I, I haven't spent uh, the a net amount that I spent on gear was zero last year and this year. That's so good. That's good. Yeah, that is good. It's good to be at that stage. Um, Joel, you mentioned Netflix. So do you know what's going to come next? Uh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you some questions. Do you watch oh, much? Yeah, Netflix? yeah, yeah. I know. I do. I do and watch Netflix. <laughs> okay, cool. But although actually, the things oh, actually one of the things I'm going to ask you is on Netflix. But the other two, um, maybe on just other streaming things or movies in general. Do you watch movies in general as well? I do. Yeah. I, I do. well, I I usually don't have as much time as I would like to have for watching movies in Net Netflix. And one thing about Netflix and HBO, I have both is that even though I don't watch much, I do have Netflix and HBO. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. But, That's expensive uh, coming out every month, though, man. Uh, is it? Uh, well, <laughs> I do share Netflix with other people. HBO oh, that's cool. Expensive, so that's maybe uh, 15 euros per month total oh, wow. for both. Oh, okay. That's not too bad, is it? No. Yeah. Worse, but uh, but I, one, one thing about uh, Netflix or HBO is that series, when I, start to, uh, when I start watching a series that I like, I'm just hooked. And I can't stop watching it. And sometimes uh, it, I, I even try to stop working, say, half an hour earlier so that I can have the time at home mm -hmm. to watch it. So that's not good. <laughs> I just get hooked. I can't stop watching it. Oh, so, that's a great. Yeah, I love that. I love that feeling, though, when you like when you're really into a good series. I love that. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. Okay, man. So I'm going to do some uh, read some synopses and let's ah. see. If you 
see if you can get it. It's a bit rubbish at that, but let's, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> okay, so this first one's an older movie. All okay. right. It's a clue. Okay, so after the rebels are brutally overpowered by the Empire on the ice planet Hoth, Luke Skywalker begins Jedi training with Yoda while his friends are pursued across the galaxy by Darth Vader and bounty hunter <laughs> Boba Fett. You always start with the easy ones, isn't it? Yeah, an easy. I do try to start with an easier one. Yeah. So that's, of course, that's Star Wars. Uh, no, sorry, uh, Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. It's but like, I don't know what episode it is. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So you're right. Uh, it is Star Wars. So it's. It the, is either the fourth, fifth, or sixth one. I know that. That's right. It uh, is one of those. It's the yeah. planet Hoth with Chaba the Hutt. So that's probably the Ooh. fourth. Oh, close. So it's it's the fifth. fifth. It's fifth, fifth, yeah. Uh, em- fifth, the Empire Strikes Back it is the Empire. All uh, right, back. okay. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. That's 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 a win already. Okay, cool. So your so your second one. This is a Netflix special that was out recently. So I don't know if you've seen this, but it was really good. So, a musical comedy special shot and performed by Bo Burnham alone over the course of a very unusual year. I don't know that one. No. Okay, you, sh- you should watch it. It's so good. It's called Bo Burnham Inside. So it's just this one man. He filmed it himself, wrote it himself, just oh. over lockdown for a year. Like it's funny, but it's also dark. All the- it's so creative. It's honestly, it's amazing. It's so nice. Good. I'll try that. Yeah, honestly, it's so good. It's brilliant. Yeah. Really good. Um, okay, final one. Um, so this is a movie. This is about I don't know, probably about three years old now. Okay, so. A faded television actor and his stunt double strive to achieve fame and success in the final years of Hollywood's golden age in 1969, Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, I saw that uh, in the movies. That's the Tarantino. uh, Yes. What's what's the name? Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. Boom. Nice one. (laughs) Good. I thought that was quite a tricky one from that synopsis. Well done, man. That's really good. Cool. Well, you could ask me about uh, if, if you were to ask me about anime series and movies on netflix i'd probably uh, more easily get that right oh really cool i've never watched really any man in may actually oh age. it's it's just i love it really i mean if you want to start uh, just for starters just anything from miyazaki that's that's uh, that's her perfection oh, that's okay. really good miyazaki that's uh he just he passed away some years ago and he was um kind of a a, a hero in in japan uh, everybody loved him and his work. Oh, so he's cool. really good. All his movies are just perfect. And uh, I, I just started there, and the, and from there I just started watching because Netflix has a lot of good uh, anime series, some originals. Oh, okay. Netflix, so. Well, I, so yeah, I should really try. It. I like animation in general, so I'm sure I would like it. Mm, yeah, I and I I just love the the atmosphere that you can get from anime sometimes more intensely than you do in movies because uh, okay. it's a lot more I, I don't know more thought of but more uh finely crafted you know all the landscapes it's just it's just beautiful mm, cool. cool i should try it i should try it yeah. i know my wife hates any animation really so it'd have to be something i watched yeah i know it's funny isn't it yeah she's we're not into like kind of like pixar even or stuff like that but yeah really? i should try it my own not i'll do wally it on... i cried when i watched wally in the movie oh uh, really you know that's one i've never seen actually i uh, do wally like... is just perfect just is try it? it with her yeah uh, okay i'll have to try yeah. that yeah <laughs> oh, cool did you cry yeah is it, is it i just... did i'm just a cry oh. baby <laughs> oh yeah no i yeah. get that it's good to be emotional man it's good oh, yeah. it's like um, like the beginning um the opening sequence to up have you seen up I did. That's another one. Mm, that's sad, yeah. isn't it? That I just sequence. loved it. Yeah. yeah. It is good. Mm, yeah. It is good. <laughs> it's anyway, let, let's go back to your photography, Joe. That was yeah, a, a, good little seg- a good little uh, little change, but I like that. So um, one of your specific reportage awards that I think is great um, is obviously from a wedding during these COVID times. The, mm-hmm. the shot is of a lady like holding what looks to be hand sanitizer. I, oh, yeah. I think yeah. like wait, yeah, waiting inside for the, the wedding party to come in. And it's yeah. such a fab storytelling frame. Can you, can you tell us more about that shot? Do you remember taking that one? I do, I do, yeah. Uh, so um, <clears throat> I had a second photographer with me uh, on that day, and I always ask the second photographer to be uh, by the groom as the bride is coming in. Okay. So I want the that photographer to be uh, catching the tear in the groom's eye, if there's any, <laughs> yeah. and at least his expression as he looks at the bride. 
uh, for the first time. Uh, so I always have to be close to the bride. And in that case, I was just going in and out of the church, uh, just trying to um, frame her within the uh, door mm-hmm. of the church. And that lady was just standing there to the right, uh, looking out, just standing to the right of the door. And I could either frame her in the shot or try not to. Or I could just, because she was in the shade, I could easily just take her out. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I just, I, I tried a couple of pictures, but I, only, I, I just thought right there that it would be cool to show that picture um, for the future. I mean, because yeah. our kids will probably, uh, if, if all things go well, they will not remember uh, mm-hmm. how it was to live during the pandemic. And they won't go through another pandemic later on, I hope. Mm, Um, Yeah, yeah, let's see, but I hope so. Mm. Uh, So, these are amazing times for us to uh, document, I think. Yeah. Uh, And I wanted to do that. Uh, So, during last year's weddings, I was always worried about uh, doing that, about getting a set of pictures that could show the reality. Uh, Well, sometimes, sorry. Sometimes people would ask me to, uh, uh, they would just take their masks off for me to take their picture. Right. And I would mm. be like, say, I entered a room where the bride was getting ready and people would sometimes would just take their masks off because they wanted to look nice in the picture. Mm. And I was like, please, uh, just don't do anything uh, for the sake of the pictures. Just mm. act normally. And yeah, and, and I took some pictures that I think will be very uh, valuable. Mm-hmm. Uh, for family in the future yeah it's totally true yeah totally true it's a slice of life that a lot of people don't get to live through or see and it's um yeah it's yeah it's important to have um documented totally agree with that i think it's also it's, it's next level storytelling it's like a lot of photographers you know maybe would have just focused on the the bride and was it her dad outside with two flower girls yeah as well? yeah, yeah and yeah. so a lot of people would just be thinking of that you know i i'm, I'm just gonna you know that's the important thing to get so it, it's next level level to think of how you can tell more of a story in a single frame by and how you've done that purposefully by including the lady with the sanitizer but purposefully including the wedding party in the background out of the church it's great man it's proper yeah I, I that's one thing that i always try to do so even uh, without talking about the pandemic i mean when i look at pictures from weddings from say 10 15 20 years ago uh, i always uh, i i notice the passing of time not because of the image quality say but because of the things that are constantly changing say cars phones uh those are probably the two main ones mm-hmm. um and that's something that probably most of us or most wedding photographers would try not to frame in the picture the cars and the mobile phones Mm-hmm. But that's something that I purposely want to do because that's that's constantly evolving, right? Mm-hmm. And if you take pictures of the cars now that are brand new, they will be like vintage in 20 years from now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so I think that's a good way to uh, to time frame it, you know, to to set yeah. those pictures in a specific time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah, true. I, I like doing that. Of course, not with all the pictures, but. <laughs> yeah, every single one. Yeah, like, <laughs> every single one. There's the car back there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. It's really that's really interesting. Um, anyone listening now, do head to thisreportage.com, and I'll include that reportage award that Joe just spoke about. It's really cool. And while we're on the subject of awards, you've won three story awards from us as well. It's amazing, man. Because they're so so difficult to to get yeah. even one to win three. Um, is the storytelling? Is the story? I can't even say the word. No. Is <laughs> the storytelling side of what we do? You know, and TIR is that something which especially appeals? to you and do you have any tips for people entering the story awards as a three-time winner as well uh well uh, <laughs> that's a tricky question put you on the spot i know sorry <laughs> uh i don't i i don't think i'm good at looking at my work and, and deciding what's good or what isn't but one thing that i've always um paid a lot of attention what i always liked is uh multiple images so uh, i i don't pay that much attention it's not as important to me to get a single reportage award i always go for the stories not because um 
I think the stories are more important by themselves. I just like stories more. Say on the uh, world press photo, for example, you have the single images and, the, and you have the uh, stories. I think it's called Stories Awards, yeah, cool. like multiple sets of images. And uh, when I when I check that, I always go first to the multiple stories because I think that that actually tells a story, right? And we're kind of as as human beings, we're geared into liking stories. And I just love sets of images. Mm. Uh, I always did. And if they those are in, say, a blog, for example, with some text that even helps further. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I just love sets of images. So uh, trying to tell a story with a with a small number of images, I know it's difficult, but uh, I the way I do it is trying to uh, choose images that are different from uh, the regular images. Mm -hmm. And being there, it, it's probably a bit difficult as you're shooting to be there and thinking uh, what kind, how to do it at a totally different image. That's not, not how I do it in the day. I'm just trying to look around, see if there's something different, but I'm not purposely wanting to do a different image, right? I'm just mm -hmm. waiting for something to happen that might be different, mm -hmm. and then um, yeah. I'll, I'll 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 try to take that picture. But then, uh, I mean, choosing the images so that's that's the hardest part for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but not not for uh, delivering to the client. That's so easy. I do it really fast. Choosing the images. The 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 hardest part for me is actually going from what I have delivered to the client. Uh, into a smaller, a really small set of pictures mm. for the um, the awards. So I, I don't know. I think I'm bad at that. So <laughs> well, you're not though, because you've won three already, man. It's so good. Yeah, well, you must have been. Yeah. I can't remember. Did you get a story award first, or was it a reportage award first? I can't remember. But you must have been then, because your love of stories. You must have been happy when you got that first story award. Uh, yeah, I was really happy. Yeah, I think I first got a, a reportage award and then a story uh, and a reportage award uh, uh, next. Nice. And then on the, on the not the last um, set, but the, the previous one, I got uh, two um, stories and three wow. reportage awards, I think. That's like, so like, good, man. That's so good. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. Well, most people don't win a single one, so it's proper, proper, awesome stuff. It's really yeah. cool, man. It's really yeah. cool. Um, <laughs> let's do some. Let's do because we've we're running. <laughs> I've, I've I've done hardly any of my kind of. I have a tab of questions that I call random. <laughs> okay. I've not done any from that yet because we've yeah. we've just spoke about a lot of specific stuff, which has been really great. But I want to ask you some random questions. Sure. So we'll try and do it. We'll do some quick fire ones. Okay. Cool. Just some short, short. Okay, so let's see if we can do some quick answers. Okay, okay, cool. let's do it. I don't normally do this, but let's just do it. Let's just do it. <laughs> okay, um, Joel, if you won the lottery, what would you spend it on? Ooh, uh, <laughs> travel around the world. Yeah, again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, there's still a lot of stuff that I haven't seen. So yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. I, I love that. That's, that's happiness, you. but now with my family. But yeah, that's happiness for me. That's oh, well, you, you've answered another question that I could ask of what is happiness so i won't ask that one because you just said that okay um what does it mean to be successful to you what is success oh that's tricky i mean success is a mix for me it's a mix of uh getting uh the right kinds of work that i like to do not just the ones that put the food on the table but the ones that i feel i'm i'm happy doing but at the same time having time for my family yeah that's that's to me that's success plus uh, getting some recognition from my peers, and that's where TIR comes in. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, man! And you're getting all of that. It sounds like you, you know, you are successful because you're, you're well, getting all of that at the moment. So. It's juggling a lot, yeah. But you mm. need to juggle a lot and and know what your uh, weaknesses are and trying to solve those. Yeah, mm. I suppose. What are well, that? Led, what are your weaknesses, Joel? Apart from social media, what are your? Weaknesses? Uh, that's mostly social media, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Where and, do you get your bookings from? Because I imagine you don't get well. Because you don't. You say you're not into your social media, so maybe you don't get lots of bookings through uh, that. I imagine where where do I you get your yeah. bookings from? Yeah, so something like thirty per, thirty to forty percent, depending on the year, comes from wedding planners, uh, and then twenty to thirty oh, cool. percent from friends, and right. then the the remaining would come from. So <clears throat> I just go on to Google and I search uh, wedding photographer in Lisbon, mm -hmm. and there and there's a list, and the the, the first four. 
uh, results come from like websites, di directories, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll just choose the directory that uh, is more in line with the kind of work I do. That makes and sense. I'll just, yeah. I'll just, uh, that's what I, what I invest my money in terms of, mm -hmm. I say, I don't, I don't put any money on Instagram or Facebook or Google even. I just, I just put all the money there. And that and makes sense. Yeah. And, and that's on, a and a top tip actually, uh, <laughs> when people um, from, uh, well, I just I just use one of those platforms right now. Uh, two years ago, I was using three, but now I just use one. Okay. And one when, when people uh, when when clients get to me, they'll just ask that um, generic question if I'm available, etc. And I always try to the, the interesting uh, weddings, say for the venue, for the the date, for whatever their description is. I always try to do a follow up on WhatsApp because I always have the phone number. Of those, uh, okay. uh, I always write on my reply. I will do a what uh, a, a follow up on WhatsApp in the coming days. But if you don't want me to, please reply to this email. So I, I try not to be intrusive, but uh, I always okay. do a, a follow up. And that those follow ups have been uh, what's making the difference for me. Uh, that I've okay. been selling a lot of weddings just from the follow ups, because a lot of people sometimes think, well, uh, I uh, we did we just put you uh, aside because say you didn't have video on your um, on your price sheet so mm -hmm. I thought we, you didn't do any video and then of course I, I talked to them saying that I um, I have um, I know videographers that I can re recommend uh -huh. so, yeah. uh, that but, makes uh, sense that's, that's that follow example. Example. that follow up yeah. kind of what's that uh, thing what, yeah. what, what kind of thing do you say in that follow up are you just saying yeah what kind of thing are you saying yeah, just well, I just get in touch saying that uh, I ask them if they um, have the chance to read um, your to, reply to, 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 to see what what I sent them. Actually, also one more thing, uh, another top tip. I use DocSend, which is a platform where you put uh, your say your PDF with with your prices and your information, mm -hmm. and that will uh, then so you have to pay yearly for that. But uh, what you gain is access to when people want to, to see your PDF, they all have to put their email. And if they uh, check that PDF, say, two or more times, you'll always know how many times people uh -huh. have returned to their, to, to, to that document. So uh, if people see it two or more times, you, you know, they're at least a bit interested. Yeah, that's in true. Follow up. And you can also check how long each person was on each page. Oh, wow. So, that is cool. Yeah. So well, that's called you, DocSend, did you say? DocSend. DocSend.com, yeah. Mm. So if people say on the first time they go to the um, to the, the page where I have my prices and the, then they come back after, say, a few days and they go to the terms and conditions, I know they're interested, right? Because mm -hmm. I know yeah. how much time they spent on each page. So, yeah, so that's that's a valuable tool. And, and then when I go to WhatsApp, I already know how many times they checked the that document and uh, i can just go from there i can ask them so do you have any questions the, about uh, the prices or about the terms and conditions because i know what they were looking at and um <laughs> that's and really that's cool a few more questions about their wedding i want i'm interested in their wedding and, and that also helps yeah Man, I think that's all really great advice. I think doing that follow up is what a lot, maybe a lot of us don't do. And as you say, it must really, it really helps your conversion rate. Then it must. Yeah, be. it does. I mean, I, I uh, three years ago, I tried to uh, do to all that time that I'm dedicating right now to the follow ups. I was putting that time into, say, Instagram. That's when I uh, increased my my. Uh, followers from mm -hmm. just a few to what I have right now. And it's been static for the last, say, two years. But the time that I was dedicated back then, I got, say, like two weddings from Instagram. Right. But right now, the same time I'm dedicating every single day for the follow-ups, I'm getting a lot more weddings. Yeah. Like, there's no comparison. That makes total sense then. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah, that's great advice, man. Such awesome tips. It's so good. Yeah. So good. <laughs> Love it. Um, Joe, I'm, 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 we're gonna, I think we've got, got time for one more question, man, because um, oh. it, it just flies by talking to you. Yeah, it it's, been, it's been so good, man. You've <laughs> yeah, given thanks. so much. It's been so good. Really, really loved it. Um, 
but let's end on a big one. Let's end, end on a big Ooh. one. <laughs> it's not the canapes one. It's going to be a proper proper question. Um, I wanted the canapes one. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I do eat the canapes done. <laughs> you life. do, do you? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually before I get on to <laughs> you've got to yeah, I bet they're good in Portugal. If I didn't eat the canapes, oh, really? like you have to eat the canapes. <laughs> oh really? Is it like that? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um I was gonna ask you actually, because something you just said just then, actually, because you said about thirty percent of your weddings come through maybe through wedding planners, is that yeah. right? Yeah. So is that is that something you've put again energy into into like kind of forming relationships with wedding planners, or is it just because you've done a you know a good job when they've been organizing a wedding and it's so it's come naturally that they've referred to you? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of relationship that you build over the years. And uh, that's, uh, I mean, uh, say in the first year I worked with, say, a wedding planner, I just did one wedding. And I like to uh, maybe do a bit of a discount, maybe just depending on the, on the date, of course, but mm -hmm. just, just trying to get in touch with a wedding photographer, because uh, with a wedding planner, just to, trying to get to know them. And also, if I don't like, say, the, the, the kind of uh, relationship, the, the, the kind of chemistry that I have with the, with the wedding planner, I might not be interested in continuing that, mm, sure. that, with, that with them. But if I do, I mean, then that's just natural. I mean, it's kind of friends. You'd, you like to have to work with people that you like. Mm -hmm, and, yeah. of course, and they like. Uh, so there's this specific wedding planner. They, they of course, they recommend um, several photographers. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, because also they they do several weddings per day, so they, they would have to. And uh, I'm 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 really uh, happy and even flattered that when they have um, friends and, and even family that are getting married, they usually recommend my work. Uh, so they cool. actually, besides liking me, so to speak, they also like my work, and that's mm. to me that's, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. That's cool. That's cool. great to hear from as well. Great, cool. I love people have got so much from this episode. It's great. And so. and so and the final question I was going to ask you though. So yeah. the big yeah, what would be your top tips, Joel, for to help someone become better at the documentary side of what we do? So specific, any tips for for getting better at documentary wedding photography? What would be your advice? Uh, top tip. So if you're kind of starting wedding photography, if if it's something recent. I would probably say that there's really uh, no other way than just shooting, shooting, shooting until you feel comfortable because stress is just an enemy of creativity, right? But once yeah. you're into it and you're more comfortable, I think that it might help if you have a second shooter that just covers the must-have pictures okay, so that yeah. you can be a bit freer to take the the pictures that you want to take and, mm -hmm. and to be a Makes bit sense. more um with your eyes open to what's going around but then again i do love shooting alone also right and in, in that case uh my top tips shooting alone would probably be uh just um don't stress yourself too much uh at, at the beginning of the day just take it easy because probably the most important uh, shots will be coming later on. And at least in Portugal, you'll have weddings that go that spend between 12 to 18 hours. Wow. Uh, so if you, you get tired too early, you won't have the energy, therefore not the creativity to take the nice pictures later on. So mm, yeah, that makes sense. Just place yourself in the beginning. And I think that's going to work. Great. Great stuff, man. That all great <laughs> advice. Honestly, it's been so much stuff in your episode. That is so cool. <laughs> oh man, really enjoyed it. And you've just given so many great bits of tips and advice. Technical side, shooting side, business side. It's been awesome, man. Really oh, great. <laughs> I hope it helps someone. Yeah. Oh, I'm really a positive it will honestly it's awesome and um, as I said before as well if anyone wants to see that reportage award that Joe spoke about do head to this reportage.com and I'll include it there and, and I'll link through to your website as well man and, and man thank you so much for your time really enjoyed course, that yeah. dude. I, awesome. me too yeah thank you and if anyone's uh, interested if anyone has any questions more probably more on the uh, uh, technical side of things either with Excel or Puji just feel free to get in touch and I will try to help as much yeah. as I can 
That's really lovely of you too. That's really nice. And oh man, and hopefully I'll um, get to see you in the flesh again one day. Uh, I know. hope so. I hope so. Maybe, uh, maybe even um, if there's that uh, Christmas party. Yeah, we're, I'm, I'm, we're going to do it as much as possible if we can. Yeah, that would be so cool. Yeah, I would love to go there. That'd oh, be, be so good, man. I'd, I'd, I'd I'd love that. I'd have to introduce it to my wife as well, and be, yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be really cool. Yeah, and I'd love to come and do a little meet up in Lisbon again. That was oh, really that'd fun. Be perfect. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That'd Probably in September or later, because right now we have a bit of a spike in the number of cases. But uh, yeah, yeah, September or later, that'd be perfect. Oh man, love to see. That'd be so cool. Yeah. But anyway, dude, thank you so much, and hopefully I'll see you soon. But just thanks so much for that. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, loved it. Thanks. See you later, man. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. You've been listening to the 84th episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. Joao shared so many great bits of advice and tips there. So great. Hope you enjoyed listening. Head to thisisreportage.com for a link to his website and to see the specific reportage award that he spoke about on the episode too. We have lots more episodes of the podcast available where we speak to wedding and family photographers from all over the world. Delve into our back catalogue to hear from the likes of Rocio Vega, Pedro Villela, Eve Sheppers, Stefana Ferrell, Rowena Meadows, Patrick Matier, Gretchen Yost, Adam Riley, Darren Kerwin, The Framers, Dominique Shaw of York Place Studios and many more too. If you're not yet a member of the Trepotage or the Trepotage family, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 individual award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers, and much more too. There's just over two weeks left to submit to our next award collections. The deadline is the same for both our wedding site and our family site. Submit by 2359 BST on 24th of July 2021. No poses, nothing staged, this is reportage. And this is bye for now. Mm -hmm.